Hey everybody, it's Steve from Black Octopus Sound, and I am f stoked to show you around this new pack that we've just released. It's called Neurosis. It's from the Production Master label, and we've released it on our site, blackoctopus-sound.com. It is a rich, fat, extremely exquisitely well-produced sample pack. Now, we we insist on the packs that we release already being exquisite. Now, this pack is a standout pack. This is a rare pack that actually has made our jaw hit the floor so hard that we actually just scrape it up with a shovel. This pack is incredible. It is amazingly well produced and it is so user friendly as you'll see in this video. Now in this video I'm going to show you around the pack a little bit and some things that I've done really quickly. This sketch I made in basically about 10 minutes and so I'm also going to show you some really cool production techniques for making drum and bass or other different types of bass music, some a couple drum techniques and a really sick bass technique. So, anyways, let me uh, sh let me go on without further ado. So, in the pack here, I'm just going to show you around this project file. There's the drum loop, and I have a, a drum loop that I've made that I've called Hats, which I'm going to actually. I'm going to rename that to drum loop. It's a drum loop that I've made with the one shots from the pack. And I've done a couple processing t techniques here. I've snipped off the low end with a with a high pass filter. Now that's going to prevent any phasing issues from the kick and snare in this fat punchy drum loop to the loop that I've constructed. And I've added some sidechain compression. So I'm going to turn that off just so you can hear what it sounds like without the sidechain compression. And with it on. Now, the, what I've done is I've tweaked the sidechain compression settings in a way that it works with the groove of the original drum loop, and it adds a little bit of a slam to the feel of the drums. That's with it off, and here's with it on. It adds like a little bit of pressure or a force or some movement to the drums that adds a really nice musical feel. Now, what I've done to do that is I actually have used basically the default settings with the sidechain compression uh, in terms of the attack, attack and release. I, had, I didn't touch them, I didn't need to. But what I did was I micro adjusted the ratio and I did that use, holding the command key on Mac it gives me the opportunity to make subtle, very micro adjustments as opposed to these big gargantuan adjustments. And so we really start to win the, the compression game. We know we're at an intermediate to advanced level with our compression skills when we can start to detect the subtle difference between the uh, a millisecond adjustment of an attack or a release or just micro nuance adjustments to the ratio and how it changes the movement and the feel it can be of, of the sound it can be very subtle at first and kind of if you don't know what you're listening for then it can be hard to detect but um anyways that's kind of a, a piece of the target with working with compression and so i've micro tweaked the ratio to work with the groove of the track i noticed that even at like 5.12 or so it kind of just felt a little bit off to me. I used my ears to listen, but I also used my heart and my chest to feel how the sound makes me feel. You know, it kind of is like the left-brained mathematical piece and the right-brained intuitive feeling emotional level piece combined together to make the decision. And I find that a lot of music production decisions are best made when the left brain mathematical pieces in check and also the right brain emotional pieces in check as well. So there's the original drum loop, the drum loop that I've made, and there's a duplicate of the drum that I've made with some bit crusher and overdrive on it and an even more high passed. And so the three combined makes for a high energy drum loop. And see with all three simultaneously, like the bit crushed overdriven one adds like almost like a percussive type of an element to the drums that really amps up the fullness and energy of the drums. The these two these two synth layers here are just straight up from the pack. And I've done very minimal processing to them, a little bit of EQing on both of them to kind of sit a little bit more nicely together in the mix. And even then, I haven't done much to them. This is just basically a quick sketch for me to show you the pack. And so let me run through the loop. So 
So let me show you just how easy it is to make a uh, track with this pack. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna go to my bass hits track here and just start dropping and dragging sounds into the project. I'm not even listening to them, it's just gonna be random. Maybe I'll duplicate that one. Yeah, let's do a few more. Okay, that's good enough. There we go, I got a little loop. So let's throw a bass uh, drum loop in there. Like, see, it's so ridiculously easy. Now, uh, let me th show you a couple cool techniques that I've done that are a little bit extra. I'd give you something a little bit more special about this video. And so it's these two sounds here that I've done with the Ableton sampler instrument. So let's take a look. Let's go into what I've done here. So this is bass shot F03. So that's this sound right here. And I'm just going to change the color so it's easy for me to pick out from the crowd. And so here's the original sound. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn that off for a moment. So that's the sound, it's a cool sound. And I've taken that sound and transformed it into this. Here. That one. So here's before, and here's after. So here's another instance of it right here with a different sound. Which one's this one? This one's F276. So that's this one. Let's make it orange so I can pick that one up from the crowd. So this is the original for this one. And I made it into this. So this is a really cool technique that I used extensively in my glitch hop production days as the artist Tantric Dex. And so let me show you how I've done this from scratch, from the ground up. So I'm going to create a new MIDI track and let's color it bright red and call it new twist. And I'm essentially just going to copy the MIDI, MIDI, which is just a solid F2 note. And I'm going to, let's turn this one off. We'll just go like that. Twisty one will be off and we'll activate new twist. Let's make that red because I like organization. Let's move it up here so we can see it easier. And so essentially what I'm going to do is on this track, there's nothing on it just yet. It's a blank MIDI track with one single clip. I'm going to add a sampler instrument on it and I'm going to take this two, F shot 276 and I'm going to throw it in the sampler. Okay, so first things first, this is in the key of F, so I need to make sure that the root key in the sampler instrument is in the key of F. And so that will keep the piano roll keyboard accurate, otherwise it's inaccurate. We need to tell the sampler that, that the root key of the sound we're putting in it is in F, so that it aligns the keyboard appropriately. So... <laughs> Okay, so now you can see as I play the clip, you can see the margin running across in here, right? So that's really important to know, a, a important function about the sampler instrument in regards to this trick. So we're going to go into the sustain mode and hit the left and right arrows and ditto for the release mode. So the left and right arrow. And now next is we're going to go into the pitch and oscillator tab and activate the pitch envelope. Now the amount is goes up in semitones, that's what the ST there stands for, and so we want to turn that up in increments of octaves to keep it musical and in key. Um, and there's 12 semitones in an octave. So I'm gonna start with maybe 24 or 36, 12, 24, 36. You can even go up to as high as 48 if you, if you want to, but I don't want to for this particular technique. So now let's listen to the sound. So there's a pitch dive happening now, thanks to the pitch envelope. And now watch what happens as I turn up the decay time. Okay, so now we're going to go a little bit further into the sound and go into the sample. And we're going to find a part of the sound that sounds kind of particularly interesting where there's a lot of movement. Now that's the key to doing this technique well, is finding a part of the sound that there's lots of movement. See, already that sounds super badass. And see how it changes the sound depending on which part of the sound we've selected. 
There, I'll just for the sake for the sake of decisiveness, I'll just stick with that one. So now let's hear it in context. Let me turn that. Now I'm gonna add a limiter just to make it just just for loudness sake. I could add a utility plugin. Doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter in this case because I'm not pushing it too hard. But. There, that, that those parameters work really well with the groove of the track, so I'm going to stick with that one. So anyways, that's that trick where we use the pitch envelope to really have fun with a neuro bass sound. Yep, anyways, the Neurosis pack from Production Master now out on Black Octopus Sound. Black Octopus hyphen sound dot com. Ciao.